Everyone loves a good story, especially a Christmas story. There's something magical about dancing lights, decorated trees, and beautifully wrapped gifts that stirs within us a nostalgic sense of yesteryear, memories of a better time. But this isn't that kind of Christmas story. <laughs> no, no, no. What makes this story special is the fact that most of it really happened, and not too long ago. Known as the Christmas Crazies, Jack Baker's family always celebrated the holidays with the most splendorous display of illumination in the neighborhood. Jack would tell you that it was because he loved the season. What he might not mention is that he also simply preferred to be the best at everything he did. Well, it's Christmas time again, which means big lights, big gifts, and big expectations for children and grown-ups everywhere. But bicycles and video games aren't on the minds of everyone this December, including the Robinson family, who live just behind me. At least they did, until their house was foreclosed just two days ago. Now, like dozens of families here in Wooded Falls, they'll be spending their Christmas looking for a home. Kind of a depressing way to kick off a Saturday morning, isn't it? Dad, did you know that the unemployment rate in Wooded Falls is up 7% this year? Unemployment rate? What? Why aren't you watching cartoons? Some of these people can't even afford Christmas presents. Do you know what that means? Yeah, all the good toys are still in stock. Seriously, I want you playing more video games. Hey, Michelle. Can you come play with me? Oh, sweetie. You know I would love to. But Mom and Dad have a very important meeting with Santa today. We gotta tell him everything you want for Christmas. Hey, but Angie will be over here in a little bit. Okay? Okay. What's wrong? You love Angie. I know. Hey, I know I haven't been around much the past few months. Years! Don't you have comic books? Be normal. <sighs> Just a busy time for Dad right now. Okay, there's people pulling at me from every different direction. But it won't always be like this, okay? Okay. Okay. Oh, there she is. I'll get it. No cell phone. It's an important call. That's what you always say. But you know how mom gets when it rings on the weekends. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you aren't kidding. Jack, you coming? Yep, be right there. Hey, you two be good. All right, see you tonight. Being the best was good, and Jack looked forward to a long, satisfying life at the top. And it may have happened had it not been for a brief encounter with an unusual Santa. Yeah, Merry Christmas. Can you help the needy just a little? Uh, yeah, yeah, here, let me give you something. Uh, whoa, quarter, <laughs> I might need that one. Bless your generosity. You know they say if you just give a little, a great deal can be accomplished. May your life be forever changed from this day forward. Merry Christmas. I'm serious. I got the government robbing me from the top because I make good money. I don't need the poor chipping at me from below. I don't work 70 hours a week to finance this whole planet. I'm serious, Cheryl. I feel like everything that moves and breathes, I gotta support it. Baker. Mr. Ferguson, hi. Oh, no, I left it on my desk. Hey, is there any way I can get that to you early Monday morning? You need it right now. You gotta be kidding yeah. me. No, not a problem. Be there in 15 minutes. I gotta sign the Allison contract. Look, he needs it, Cheryl. All right, I gotta go in. It'll just take a few minutes. It never just takes a few minutes, Jack. The moment you walk through that door, it's gonna be like any other day, and he's gonna put you to work. 
Yeah, maybe you're right, but what do you want me to do? It's my fault, okay? You know what I want for Christmas, Jack? You. I want the phone to stop ringing, and I want you, even if for just a few days. Yeah, and that's cute and all, but when this phone stops ringing, we're gonna be bumming Santa for peanut butter. Before you know it, you and I and the kids will be spending all kinds of time by the pool. But I gotta position myself now. Cheryl, we have talked about this. You've talked about this, Jack, for years. How many more years are we gonna lose before this elusive bliss begins? I need some money for the Feed the Needy offering. Yeah, Dad, can I have some too? Please. Everybody else is giving. All right, all right. Please. Wouldn't want you guys to look bad in front of your friends, huh? There you go, Please. get out of here. Well, thank you. All right, class, let's remember. We all give a little. Together we can do great things. Yes. Yes, Christmas had always been a magical time for Jack and his family, a perfectly orchestrated exhibition of memory-worthy bliss for all involved. You can wash them all away with the beautiful blue. Since hitting the market over two years ago with the beautiful blue line, the question has always been, how do we sell more product? Well, I'm pleased to inform you that we have sold over two million units this quarter alone. And as soon as this little darling hits the airwaves, the numbers are projected to double for next quarter. So ladies, gentlemen, we have ourselves a new question. What changes will we have to make in order to keep up with the explosion of future sales? Well, I'm sold. Ah, the good life. Jack! You outdid yourself today, kid. If you come anywhere near those projections, I think there may be a VP position waiting for you. I'm shocked. I don't know what to say. I ordered my new nameplate yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, I look forward to exceeding your expectations. I bet you do. Big day today, Baker. Now go home, get some sleep. See you in the morning. Ah, what do you want? Uh, it's me, Wesley, sir. I'm Jacko's Co-marketing executive, if I could have just a few moments of your time, I'd love to show you some new concepts for the Beautiful Blue line that I think will rock your world. We already have product designed for Beautiful Blue. It's been on the shelf for two years now. Uh, yes, and no offense to the amateur who designed them, but I think with a few minor enhancements, we could take our look to the next level. What when I have did we hire a co-marketing executive? I didn't authorize this. But I... We didn't. He's my assistant. I hired him three weeks ago. He's just a little ambitious. There are two hard, solid facts you need to know about me, you little worm. I never forget a face. And I don't take kindly to people lying to me. You just dug yourself a pit, and I don't expect you'll ever crawl out of it. Great work today, Baker. You. Get an iron. I... Overslept. Pace yourself, Wessie. You don't just throw designs at Mr. Ferguson in the hallway. There's a time and a place for that, and it's not here. You'll get the hang of it. If I keep you. I... <laughs> Comments, sir. 
What do you say? Baker. Mr. Baker, we get we get a comment. We have to sit to the labeling. The labeling. Mr. Baker, need a comment on the labeling, Mr. Baker. Are any going to die because of your action? We get a comment, please. Have you been? We've been, we've been trying to reach you all morning. I got here as soon as I could. What's going on? We have a serious problem, Jack, and I'm not sure how we're going to get through this one. What happened? Is that your signature? No. Let me ask you again. Is that your signature? Yes. Well, it appears you signed off on a label with a serious misprint on it. Signed off? What are you talking about? Use in well-ventilated area. Press down on cap to open. Do now inhale fumes. I mean, do people even read those instructions? Apparently they do. 200 mindless drones were hospitalized after those bottles shipped last Thursday. The EPA tied all the illnesses to us last night. Look, I didn't sign off on anything. I've never even seen this form before in my life. Of course you haven't. We've never used them. And believe you me, somebody's gonna lose their job over that one. But the real problem is, without this form and your signature on it, there's only one person that those folks are going to blame. Me. That can't happen. Are you throwing me to the wolves? It's for the good of the company, son. If they blame me, they shut us down. And hundreds of jobs will be lost. In this present economy, Wooded Falls may not recover for years, if ever. But if you take the hit, one job is lost. And I'll bring you back later with a handsome raise as soon as all this blows over. Sir, I'm not comfortable with this. I've got a family, a house I can barely afford. I'm our only source of income. This could really hurt us. I guess I'm not asking whether or not you're comfortable with it. The forms have already been filed. They're waiting to speak with you. The question is, are you going to play ball and save hundreds of jobs? Or are you going to make this messy for everyone? Jack, I want to talk to you. Ferguson's been like a dad to you for 15 years. How could he do that? No idea. So, we need a plan. He said he was gonna call me back when this whole thing blows over, so... Just wait it out. What if it takes months? We don't have that much in savings. Have you thought about how we're gonna pay the mortgage, the credit cards, the utilities? No, I don't really want to. I just need time to let it sink in. Maybe I could go back to work for a while. Cheryl, you haven't taught in over 10 years. I mean, by the time you renew your teaching certificate, I'll be back to work. And this whole thing will be a distant memory. Besides, I mean, they're laying teachers off right now. It's, it's impossible to find a job in this economy. Any thoughts on moving forward? No. <laughs> I kind of like being on vacation. Hey, don't worry. He'll call. Formulating any plans in here? It never rings anymore. What? I had no idea how much I enjoyed being, being needed. Four more bills today. We're past due on a couple of them. Any thoughts on how we're gonna get caught up? He'll call. He just needs more time for the smoke to clear. Fine, then I'll leave these here for you. Sweetie. 
Isn't he calling? It's 3 p.m. Are you going to be getting out of bed today? No. I see. What do you want? I told you he was gonna call me. Ugh. You listen to me, Mr. Baker, and you listen good. You've been dealt a bad hand. I get that. But I'm not gonna let you lay around and sulk about it anymore. You understand me? It's over. Mr. Ferguson is not going to call you back. But it's okay. Because there's hundreds of companies out there who would love to have you on their team. It's time to go out there and figure out who they are and get you on their team. I love you, Jack Baker. It's time to come back now. Seriously. Ice water? It worked, didn't it? I don't think I can use you. I'm sorry, huh? Well, you've done a lot of selling and whatnot. But you ain't never worked in the car business, per se. We ain't selling $8 bottles of floor scrub here. We're dealing 2,000-pound killing machines that help people get to work and all. Besides, ain't you that guy on TV that poisoned all them people? I don't need you giving my lot a bad name. <laughs> That's not possible. I mean, your name has been banned from public schools as profanity. That's not official yet. I once read an article that you sold a car to a lady that needed to be push started. Hey, I gave that lady a deal on that car. I knocked 50 bucks off the window price. She was an 83-year-old widow with a walker. I mean, you framed and matted the picture. That was a big win for me. <laughs> Let's see you make that sale. I mean, th 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 this is ridiculous. I, I don't even know why I'm in here. I, I wouldn't work for you if you were the last place in Wooded Falls. Oh, you're gonna storm out of here now like you're refusing an offer or something? Hey, I turned you down, remember? <laughs> Nobody's gonna hire you. <laughs> you know how many people came in here to apply for this job in the last week alone? 650. <laughs> it's an employer's market here. Yeah, you think you're all fancy because you had some big job once? <laughs> well, let me tell you something. I had the former president of Glycor Steel in that seat just three hours ago. I can hire anybody I want to. <laughs> People like you, on the other hand, you're gonna have to leave the country to get a job. Oh, I'll find a job. Don't you lose a minute of sleep over that. I'm not going anywhere. Wooded Falls actually means something to me. I love this town, and I am gonna raise my family here. You know, I've worked my entire lifetime to build a good reputation. It's gonna take a lot more than a phony news article to destroy it. Sylvia. Send in the next one. Can I be praying for you about anything? What? No, we're fine, thanks. Good morning. Nice to see you. Hello, Hansel. Good morning. Okay, um, so the idea is that we're now offering all natural cleaning solutions so no one else gets poisoned by our stuff. Ooh. Um, this is revolutionary because no one else is doing it, so we're going to focus on being the trailblazers. <clears throat> um, this also gives us a competitive advantage because people always stay loyal to the first company to take a product to the market. No, they don't. Huh? My seven-year-old granddaughter could disprove that theory with one hand and an internet connection. 
Where did you gather that information? Uh, I, 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 Snapple. Snapple is quite good. Well, what are you, making this up? Even if that concept were accurate, and it isn't, it would only work against us. We're not the first green cleaning company. Uh, I was told we were doing something brand new, that this was something t t totally different. Brand new for us? Did you research our competition at all before developing this campaign? Or are you just pulling this out of the air? Like, what do you mean? That's it. This meeting is over. Folks, I will see you Thursday. Melvin? Oh, yes, sir. If I ever lock eyes with you on this property again, I will personally ring you out and make you drink your own sweat. You understand me? Yes, sir. When I said replace Baker, I didn't mean with a corpse. What about all the other applicants? Actually, sir, at the 57 we interviewed, he was the most qualified. What? Turns out, a good marketing mind is very difficult to come by. And that's probably why Puris has been trying to steal Jack away from us for years. Good thing he's been so dedicated to us. If they'd have got a hold of him, we'd be flipping chicken patties right now. Yeah, that's the thing. Apparently, our new sales guy, Jim, was talking with the Puris rep at the Colorado convention last week. He may have mentioned Jack's departure. You're telling me that Puris knows that Jack is on the market? Yes, sir. And that is our most qualified replacement? That appears to be the case, sir. Well, this could end badly for us. We need to make sure that Puris never gets their hands on Jack Baker. Hey, babe. Thanks for waiting up with me tonight. It has been... The longest day. Oh, I'm beginning to think I am not gonna get a good job now. We don't need a good job, Jack. We need an income. Keep it down a few notches, Cheryl. Come on. I mean, I have had a long day. <laughs> and no money to show for it. So what good is it? You might as well have been here. Help me with the kids. At least you'd accomplish something. Okay. I love you, Cheryl. I love you to pieces. But you cannot tear into me like that. Come on, this is how we used to be. Remember? I mean, back when you and I thought we weren't going to make it? I'm not going back to that. I'm not. The marital boxing gloves are retired. But you cannot talk to me like that. I mean, I am fighting a few emotions too, Cheryl. Well, you're sure hiding it well. What do you want me to do? You want me to walk around like I'm mad at the world? You want me to slam the door? Kick the neighbor's dog? I mean, would that really make you feel better? I want you to just show me that you're at least a little worried, that it's not some big joke to you, and that you're gonna fix it. Is that what you wanna hear? That I'm worried? I'm worried. I'm worried that this secure life I've worked 15 years to build for us is so fragile that a few bad months could actually wipe it out. I'm worried that every time I get rejected by a minimum wage job, just maybe I'm not as valuable as I thought I was. I'm worried. If Mr. Ferguson doesn't keep his word and doesn't call me back, that I'm not going to be able to provide the kind of life that I want to for the woman and children that I love. Most of all, I am worried, Cheryl, because for once in my life, I've got a problem, and it's not within my power to fix it. You want to know that I'm worried? Fine. I'm worried. You are the most valuable person in the world to me, with or without a job. Don't you ever be confused about that. But you know what? I think it is within your power to fix it. You're the most creative man I know. Don't just fill out an application and walk away. Use that creativity to set yourself apart.
can I help you, sir? Yeah, may I speak with Eddie? Eddie, some guy is here to see you. He'll be right with you. Yes, sir. What can I do for you? I turned in an application a couple of days ago. Just checking in, see if you reached a decision yet. No, nope. I haven't found a qualified candidate yet. But I'll know her when I see her. Okay. Well, uh, I just want you to know I'm very interested. I've been out of work a long time. I've got a family to feed. Christmas is just around the corner. I need to start making some money. Duly noted. Thanks. If you could just look at my application a second time, uh, I'm extremely motivated. I will give this company my best. Look, man, I'm sure you're a great guy. I bet you can flip patties as well as anybody in this place. The truth of the matter is, you're just not my type. Hello? Hey, I'll work for free. How's that? I'll work the first week for free. If you like my work, cut me a check. If not, I'll walk. You keep my pay for yourself. We'll call it a risk-free trial. So you're saying if I fire you for any reason, I get to keep your pay? No questions asked. A risk-free trial. That's original. I like that. Hey, you should be like a marketing guy or something. I'll tell you what, I'll give you a shot. Come back here tomorrow at noon. But you're gonna be my greeter, is that okay? Yeah, that's okay. That's great. Thank you. Hey, uh, why wouldn't that be okay? Don't forget to wash your flippers there. Eating establishment. Here we go. There you are, man. Where have you been? I need you back here now. I thought you wanted me outside. Do I look like I need you outside? Get back here and get on this cash register now. I, I don't know how to use the register, man. High schoolers know how to run this thing. Figure it out. I'll be with you in a second, dude. Get back here. Hurry it up, Jack. Come on. I'll take a big Wally with a large fry, and I want a chocolate shake instead of a soda. And give me a medium chili cheese fries. No, make it a large. A large. Uh, a large. Got it. Did you want uh, just the sandwich, or, or did you want the whole meal? Are you serious? I just said it. I know. I'm new. I'm sorry. Could you please repeat the order? Large fry. Chocolate shake. Large chili cheese fry. Just this flipper makes it very difficult. Would that be all? If I wanted more, I would have ordered it. Yes, that's all. Take my money. Your total is 726. Make sure he can count. Ow! Ow! Michelle, stop it. Mommy's trying to read.
What may I get you this wonderful day? Wonderful day, maybe for you. Give me a super Wally with onion rings, large, and an orange drink. Your total is 567. Thank you. And what may I have our chefs prepare for you today? You're cheery. I have a lot to be cheery about. What can I get for you? I gotta give you props, old man. I've never seen anybody catch on that fast. <laughs> you keep working like that, and you just might be back here next week. Thanks, Eddie. Hey, do you mind if I give my wife a quick call? I just want to check up on my kids. Making a call on the clock, man, I thought that was a chick thing. Ah, uh, you deserve it. The moment you see a customer come in here, you hang it up, all right? Will do. out for me. I'm totally busy. You guys have order number 319? Have a great day. Jack Baker? <laughs> hey, Wesley. How you been? So this is what the next step looks like. Not exactly what I had envisioned, but hey, you got to pace yourself, right? You got to put food on the table, Wesley. Oh. What can I get you? Oh, that's so sad. Mr. Big Time Corporate Executive has to wear a beak in order to feed the family. Oops, I think I feel a tear coming on. <gasps> yep, there's moisture. But wait, no, it's a tear of joy because it appears there's justice in the world after all. Let's see, I'll take a big Wally, large soda, small fry, watching my figure, and a triple order of giddy joy. I'm even willing to pay for it. But it looks like that one's on you now, doesn't it? 586. <laughs> oh, I can't wait to tell everyone at the office about this. I'm so happy I think I'm gonna burst. Your order's 212. Thank you. No. Thank you. <laughs> What? I just thought you might like to know where I went for lunch today. I'm telling everyone. <laughs> Why would I care where you ate lunch? Because I went to Penguin Point, where I was served by our dear friend, Jack Baker. He's working at Penguin Point? <laughs> Yippee! <laughs> He's more desperate than I thought. He was never willing to relocate before, but if he gets an offer from Puree's now, he just might take it. This is bad. We have got to remind him why he wants to stay in Wooded Falls. And you're the one who's going to help me do it. Ooh, a diabolical plan. How exciting. <laughs> How's my work conveyance first day on the job? It's hard work. I don't know how kids do it. I mean, everybody treats you like a bum. Like, you're supposed to be so ecstatic about getting them a burger. And basic respect, gone. Nobody says please anymore. Do you say please at restaurants? You gonna get that? Nope. 
probably just another bill collector. They've been calling every few hours, and I still don't have any money to pay them. I figure if I don't answer, they'll just stop calling. So enough about that. Tell me about your day. <laughs> it is totally not interesting. I'm just excited about getting that first paycheck. Me too. I need to do some Christmas shopping. The kids need new winter coats, and I'd like to buy me a new pair of winter boots. Yeah. Or maybe we could just focus on paying some of our bills off, you think? You know you're going to be buying me diamonds when this is all over with, right? <laughs> is that it? Yep. I asked. Twice. For both weeks? Yep. I won't make a mortgage payment. Nope. You need a second job. Yep. This is the law office of Baxter Brown, Boxwheeler and Dunn. We need to speak with you immediately in regards to your delinquent banner card account. Please return this call to 555 Baxter as soon as possible. Well, it's not enough to pay any bills. You want to go shopping? Yeah. All right, your toll comes to 141.90. Okay. You know what? We don't need all of this, so uh, this can go. This one really isn't necessary. Thank you. <laughs> this isn't working. Uh, the computer hates me. Uh, actually, every computer hates me. <sighs> Mr. Henry's gonna hate me because this is the third time I've had to page him since lunch. Oh, really? Um, um Mr. Mr. Henry, can you come up front, please? Tough boss? No! He's, a uh, beautiful human being that cares for small animals and donates little toy drums and lollipops to Norwegian villages. Uh, I, would it be better if we just canceled this whole thing and started over? Yeah, I wish I could, but I need Mr. Henry here because he has the code that I need and He's a manager, and I'm not, so I don't have it. What's the problem, Stewie? Uh, the, these folks, they just need to take a few items off their order. I, I need your code again. I'm really sorry. The problem with the items? No. No, no. Everything is fine. Uh, we just... We just decided that we don't need them. <laughs> well, no, you put them in your cards. Well, I mean, we we thought we needed them at, at first, but but then we realized that, that we, we really don't need them. I see. You realize you don't need them. Well, I'm gonna have to use my manager's code. Okay, excuse me. Putting in the manager's code. Right now. You wouldn't mind if I make a phone call, do you? Little Boom! I got your mug now. <laughs> I'd have to put that in my personal file. Mm. See them cameras up there? Those are my eyes in the sky. Next time you come into my store. Be watching. You see, shoplifters aren't prosecuted here. <laughs> oh. They disappear. Okay. Uh, is this standard store procedure when, when customers change their minds? You see that? 
Manager. Hmm, that's right. Seventeen years of active duty, son. I've seen it all. And I dropped the hammer. Hard. Food stamps? All right. Have a great day. Store manager. That means commander in chief. I'm judge. I'm jury and... Hey, ma'am. Boom! I'm jailer. That title on that little beauty means anything I do. Store procedure. Uh, uh, all right. Uh, your, your new total is... Uh, Nine ninety six eighty eight. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay, here's a uh, hundred. And uh, keep the change. Okay. Yeah. Actually, uh, I am gonna need the change. <laughs> hey, kids! Look at this. Boom! Boom! Hey, listen, you have a great Thanksgiving, and thank you for shopping at Kaiser's. <sighs> now that was a meal. Hey, Jack, what time does the game start? Eight minutes ago. Let's go, Cheryl, as usual. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. What's wrong? What's up with your TV, Baker? The game's in play. I'm not sure. Oh, your cable isn't out, is it? I hope not. It was working earlier today. Let me have a look at her. Everything looks fine back here. This is the Cheryl, of back I thought you turned that off. Water. I thought I did. I need to speak with you immediately. Should get going. Great party, though. Come on, kids, let's go. We can watch the game at my house. I've got the surround sound all hooked up and ready to go. Jack! Jack, you coming? No, no. I'll stick around and help clean up. <laughs> Let me know who wins, though. Why don't you head on up to bed, okay, and get ready. I'll be up there in a minute and reach you. Alright. Mom? Um, are you alright? Hey. It's okay, kiddo. Head on up. I'll be up in a minute. <sighs> Sweetie. Why couldn't you have just kept your job, Jack? None of this would be happening if you would have just kept your job. I had no choice. It was me or the whole town. Well, let the whole town fall then. At least we'd be in good company. That is not who you are, Cheryl. You are the voice of kindness and gentleness in this home. You have the most compassionate, amazing heart of anyone I've ever seen. Don't let this bad situation rob you of that. I'm sorry. I didn't mean it. Well, I'm the one who's sorry. You've always stood behind me. You've always encouraged me never to question anything I've done. And I've taken you for granted. All I could think about was winning. Winning at work. Winning at building our future. I was so busy trying to impress you. I just forgot how to appreciate and enjoy you. Thank you. It's gonna be okay. We're gonna figure something out. Hey, Jack. Mm hmm I wanna play for food stamps. What? 
We've been paying for other people to use them for years, right? That's what they're there for. They're designed to help people like us who need help in a bind. I'm not ready for that. We need groceries, Jack. I'm not gonna let my pride starve the kids. I've got no pride left to protect. We've just gotta survive now. So, you have two kids, both of them under 18? Yes. Any savings? Stocks, bonds? Well, we pretty much had to sell everything just to put food on the table. And we even had to sell our stocks. But I'm guessing you already know that, being as that you ended up with most of the money in taxes, huh? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Trust me, sweetie. It didn't make its way into my paycheck. Well... It looks like I'll be able to authorize $425 per month. Are you serious? Your first deposit will post on December 15th, and you should be receiving your card in the mail within two weeks or so. Oh, thank you so much. You don't know how wonderful this is. This is a temporary situation. Believe me. You have a very Merry Christmas. You too, dear. Your total comes to $725. Order number is 322. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Eddie. If you're going to keep me on the register, you think we could, like, lose the penguin costume? No. Back to work, ladies. What can I get for you? Hey, Jack, uh, I want to apologize. I acted like an inconsiderate snob, and, well, that's just not me. Okay, it's very much me. What can I say? It's my calling card. No apology needed, but thank you. Well, I did a little more than that. I told Ferguson that I saw you here. How good of you. What? I never said the remorse was immediate. It developed shortly after smearing your name around the office. At any rate, Fergie didn't see the humor quite like I had hoped. After my little wrist slap, he said to tell you that he's making plans on bringing you back. What? When is he planning on bringing me back? No idea. Your name is still kind of the kiss of death around here. But he did mention something about cutting you a Christmas bonus as a measure of good faith. You are making my day right now. Yeah, that puts a warm, cozy little fire right smack in the middle of my soul. But I was thinking that since I kind of rekindled all this, a promotion might be in order. We'll talk about it. And I want you to start calling me sir. Now you're pushing it. I suppose I could pull out some old newspaper articles and remind him of just how many people got sick. You caught me on a good day, sir. Yeah, tinkles. Let's stick with that for now. <laughs> It'll be good to have you back, Baker. Thank you, Wesley. Hey, and tell Mr. Ferguson thank you. Sir. Yes. Hello, lovely ladies. What's up with your mom? I don't know. That's the happiest I've seen her since Dad lost his job. Your dad lost his job? Yeah, like three months ago. Now our TV doesn't work and the phone rings all the time, but we're not allowed to answer it. Well, how do you pay for stuff without money? I don't know. What if your dad doesn't have a job by Christmas? Will you still get presents? I don't know. I had the most amazing day today. 
Me too, and I have good news. Oh yeah? I bet my news is better than your good news. Oh, I accept the challenge. What do you got? Well, it seems that a certain someone went down to the local food stamp office, applied, and got approved on the spot for $450 a month. <laughs> $450 a month. That's good. Top that one, Mr. Baker. Are you ready? Because you're standing right now, and you really should be sitting. <laughs> oh, stop it. Just tell me. <laughs> well, there's a local manufacturer of cleaning supplies, and they finally realized how much they need me. You got your job back? You look surprised. Come on, it's me. <laughs> There's more. No. Not the bonus. <laughs> it's going to be a very Merry Christmas, baby. <laughs> Wait, we have to celebrate. I'm going to take you out to eat. Anywhere you want to go. How? We don't have any money. I've got some emergency money tucked away. Emergency money? I've been eating sticks and dirt for three months. What are you waiting on? Monsoon? Oh, stop. It's not that much, but it is enough to help us celebrate the end of this nightmare. Now go get cleaned up. Mm. Kids, get in the van! Because we're going out tonight. talking about you being employmentally challenged and all. That's some serious stuff. I mean, shouldn't you two be talking about more important things? Like video games, dolls? We were just wondering if Christmas was going to take one to the back of the news this year. Do you think Santa's not coming to our home because Daddy's making minimum wage, huh? No, no, no. Well... I mean, dream if we can't afford a lot of stuff this time around. So, if you want, Santa could just bundle all our gifts together into one big present or something. That's a great idea. I mean, I don't see how the jolly fella can argue with that one. In fact, I got it. Why don't we get a complete set of encyclopedias? Ah, no more wasting time on the net. All the information you'd ever need right at your fingertips. Yeah, no. No way. <laughs> Stop kidding with him, Jack. <laughs> All right. You two want to know the truth? Mm -hmm. Here's the truth. We are going to have the very best Christmas ever. Mm -hmm. I promise. Yes. Oh. Give it a rest, people. It's 10.30. Actually considering it, are you? Not a chance. I mean, we've lived in Wooded Falls our whole life. When we bought this house, I mean, we agreed that we'd raise our family here. We're not going anywhere. But it is nice to be wanted. Plus, it's a good bargaining chip in case Ferguson tries to stiff me on that Christmas bonus, huh? I can see we're back to us again. <laughs> Things are finally starting to turn around. We're going to be just fine. Wesley, hey, what's the word? Why don't you tell me, Jack? What's wrong? What are you trying to do to me? I stick my neck out for you and you kick me in the throat. I swear this is why I only do nice things for myself. What are you talking about? Word has it that you've been talking to purees. Please, make this headache go away by telling me that it's not true. What? I, I, no, I, mean, I mean, they called and, and left a message on my machine, but... I never called him back. What was all that drivel I've heard about you never leaving Wooded Falls? Why would you do this to me? Look, I have no intentions of leaving Wooded Falls. 
I'm completely dedicated to coming back to Smith Anderson. Then end it. Make it clear to them that you neither are nor will ever be interested in working with them. They are enemy number one. As long as Ferguson thinks you're talking to them, there's no way you're ever coming back to Smith Anderson. All right. I'll do it. I'll call him tonight and let him know I'm not interested. I'm counting on it, Jack. You know, yours isn't the only job on the line anymore. Hi. Yeah, may I speak with Rod Stevenson, please? Rod. Hey, this is Jack Baker. Hi. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's why I'm calling. I was just wanted to say thank you for, for thinking of me. But unfortunately, I'm going to have to pass. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. I just uh, got a few irons in the fire here, and, and I'm not really interested in moving my family out of the area, so. All right. Well, I, I appreciate that. Mm-hmm. Happy holidays to you, too. Yeah. Bye. Cheryl? Yeah? Did you leave the garage door open last night? Oh. Yeah, I did. Sorry. Did you move my car? No. Did the kids move my car? Jack, what are you talking about? Oh. Oh. Are these your little ones? Yes. Sophie's the oldest. Then there's Ben, and the twins are Aaron and Aiden. They're beautiful. I imagine you're here because you haven't received your food assistance card yet. Yeah, I hate to seem impatient, but I was expecting them a few days ago, and with Christmas around the corner... And... Yes, well, unfortunately, there's a small problem with your account. I tried calling you several times, but no one answered the phone. Yeah, we don't seem to do that these days. You said there's a problem? Yes. It says here that you own two vehicles. Um, actually, we only have one. My husband's was repossessed the other day. I see. And I presume that the minivan is not your husband's car? No, that's mine. Then I'm afraid the problem still exists. It shows here that the van is completely paid off, making it an asset that you fully own. Yeah, that's actually something they can't take from us. The issue is, if you own over $1,000 worth of assets, then you don't qualify for assistance through this office. Now, if you wanted to sell the van and put the money towards your debt, then we could reevaluate your case after that point. Sell the minivan? But how would my husband get to work? We would provide you with city bus vouchers. Wouldn't that cost the city more tax dollars? Wouldn't it be more logical if we kept the van and paid our own transportation? Only if you owed money on it. Well, we don't. And if we sell the van now, it would be impossible to replace. Our credit is a mess. Right, which is why we would provide you with city bus vouchers. You would just have to come in once a month so that we could review your income status and make sure you're still eligible. And if we get a little ambitious and make too much money, you'll take our city bus vouchers away? You have to remain eligible in order to continue receiving assistance, yes. And if we sell the van, we'd have no way to get to work, leaving us with no choice but to stay below poverty level. Do you see what you're doing here? I understand your point, and I'm not arguing its validity. But these are the rules. The rules? Who made these rules? Has anyone questioned their motives? I thought the system was designed to help hardworking people who needed a temporary boost. But that's not it, is it? It's designed to trap people when they're down. And for the rest of us, we have to cut ourselves off at the knees and become completely dependent upon you, even if it costs the city more tax dollars. You're not helping people. We sit around and complain about people living off the system, but you're the ones keeping them there! You know what? You don't keep your little stamps. They're not my rules. I just follow them. You love your job. You love your job. Stay on this side of the desk.
sir? Yes? Uh, we've noticed something about the problematic beautiful blue bottles. I said I don't want to hear any more about those bottles. That mess is in our past. We need to focus on the future. I understand that, sir. And I am so sorry to be bringing this back up, but I've been looking at the artwork and there appears to be a problem. Yes, well, we're all aware of the problem. No, a less obvious problem. There were changes made to those labels before they were sent to print, and no one knows who made them. What? This is the last approved revision before they went to print. No errors, no typos. Yet on the product that shipped, there are slight variations to that design, as well as the misspelling. It's almost as if someone hacked into our system and altered the design before it was sent to print. Purees? It's the only logical answer. Cold over here. Come here, sit down, take a load off. The kids decorated the living room. It looks so beautiful. You're gonna have to see it in the morning. Can't wait. And hey, when did we lose power? Uh, about an hour ago. But it hasn't been that bad. We've just been in here hanging out, singing Christmas carols, and telling stories. This is fun, Daddy. Fun? Did you put a little something in their juice boxes? This is where we are, Jack. Love it or hate it. This is our situation until we can make it better. I'm done hiding from it. I'm done being embarrassed. This is just one of the more interesting and unpredictable chapters in our story. That's it. And I'm not gonna let it ruin another moment. We've all been talking, and we've all unanimously decided that we're all okay with a lean Christmas this year. It's just stuff. Yeah, it's cool, Dad. We don't need any big goo this year. We can just hang together, try something new. Big goo? Who is his English teacher? Oh, oh, you are. I'm so sorry. I got caught up in appearances and so focused on maintaining some silly image that I forgot to show the most important man in my life how much I love and believe in him. Even if he's flipping big wallies at Penguin Point? Even more so because I know he's doing it for us. You know, if I were given the chance all over again, Mrs. Baker, I'd marry you every time. <laughs> new revision there, JJ. Jack Baker, 
nice to see you. How have you been? Very well, and I am ready to get back to work. I can start immediately. Hey, I've been working on some new concepts so we can start filling the shelves with products. I am hungry for this. Like, I'll work from home for now. If you need more time to clear my name with the media, but I'm ready to go. Let's stop wasting time and start selling our new environmentally responsible products. Jack, hi. Jack, I'd love to help you out, son, but we can't start issuing you checks until the public forgets why they hate you. Could be months. Months? What about my Christmas bonus? Well, now, that would be a check, wouldn't it? Hey, I said no guarantees, Baker. Sir, I don't mean to be pushy, but I need that Christmas bonus. My power at the house got shut off last night. Our only source of heat is our gas fireplace, and I could go any day. I don't have a cell phone cable, no internet. And Christmas is on Sunday. My kids still don't have presents. I need that money. Yeah, speaking of money, shouldn't you be prepping my lunch? I quit my job so I could be here today. I'm completely dedicated to Smith Anderson. What about purees? I told them to find someone else. I'm not willing to relocate my family. Well, you are dedicated. Yes, sir, I am. Among other things. Well, like I said, Jack, we really can't risk bringing you back right now. After we fired you, the class action lawsuit was dropped and we're building a whole new public image. Things are going quite well for us. In fact, the way profits have risen since your departure, I don't foresee ever needing you again. Turns out that Wesley here is a pretty sharp marketing guru. Must have been from following you around all that time. I just wish you'd have taught him how to spell. We have little people for spell checking. You don't pay doctors to mop hospital floors. Wesley? Why is everyone so stunned? Hey, Russ. Jack. What's going on? I'm sorry, son. The damage is irreparable. I know it wasn't you, but the public thinks it was. If we ever change that, we put the company at risk. If you hurry, maybe you can get your penguin job back. I'd like to say I gave it my best effort, but that would be a lie. And in this case, the truth is much more fun. But come on, would you have done it any differently had the roles been reversed? We all look out for numero uno, Jack. It's what keeps the world spinning merrily round and round. <laughs> you were never gonna hire me back. All this time, you've just been leading me on. <laughs> My goodness, he's just now getting it. You're too trusting, Jack. That's always been your problem. You need to open your eyes, look around, and discover that nobody is looking out for the other guy. Yourself included, and you know it. If you're not spending every waking minute thinking about how you can make life better for Wesley here, how can you justify the assumption that Wesley or anybody else is doing it for you? Wake up, Jack. It's a cold little world we live in filled with self-serving individuals. If you want to stay on top, you got to watch your back. Come on, time to go, Jack. Well, <laughs> I'm glad that's finally over. <laughs> there are a lot of typos on this proof. Right. I'm not the best speller in the world, but that's not why I'm here, is it? It has been brought to my attention that some last-minute changes were made to this art before it went to print. What can you tell me about that? Hey. Hi. Where are the kids? Oh, I sent them outside to go sledding. 
You okay? This came today. If we don't send them $4,800 in the next seven days, we're gonna be homeless. You're not getting your bonus, are you? How did you know? The moment I received that and I opened it and I read it, I just knew. There's a way to fix this. We, we just gotta figure it out. I mean, can we call your parents? And ask them for $5,000 on December 20th? They don't have that kind of money. Well, we need to get a loan. Who in their right mind is going to loan us money? What about the church? The ministry the kids are always raising money for. Feed the needy. I, mean, I would think we would qualify for that. Well, I think that's for people who don't go to church, but it's worth a try. Everything is worth a try. I don't care what anyone thinks of us anymore. We just got to get caught up. Pastor Jim? Jack Baker, come in. What brings you here on a Wednesday afternoon? Well, I wish it were for noble reasons. But unfortunately, I was wondering if I could ask for help. What kind of help? I wouldn't even bother you with it, except um, yesterday we received notice that unless we come up with 4800 by the end of the month, we will lose our home. You know me, I'm the last one to ask for help. I just have nowhere else to go. Jack, I, I am so sorry for you and your family, and I wish there was something I could do to help, but there isn't. We don't have the resources. What? What about the Feed the Needy Fund the kids are always collecting? Ah, the Feed the Needy Fund. That is a great program, but it's not going to save anybody's home. We continue to do that year after year, more as a way of teaching our children how to give than making an impact in the community. This year we only raised $72, and we've already been approached by 14 families who are facing foreclosure. $72? Actually, that was pretty good this year considering the state of the economy. Yeah, but you have hundreds of kids donating to this fund. I mean, how could that happen? 37 cents at a time. When Jack received his final paycheck, he knew that this would undoubtedly be a Christmas like no other. Remember the time, Michelle, he pulled the Christmas tree on top of herself? <laughs> that wasn't funny, was it, sweetie? Yes, it was. <laughs> you remember the look on her face when we pulled it off? <laughs> she never moved. She just was like, that was easier. Sucks her eyes trying to figure out what happened. <laughs> oh, crap. I got a cramp. cramp. This is fun. I've really been enjoying our campfires lately. Me too was something that we certainly wouldn't have thought of. Maybe good things can't come out of bad situations. If the phone doesn't ring anymore. Hey Dad, <laughs> can we kill the power every Christmas? This is fun. You are a strange group of people. Yeah. But well, why not? It could become a new tradition. I mean, it may still be off anyways. Yay! Yay! <laughs> You know, speaking of new traditions, your gifts may not exactly be like normal. I know I promised you kids the best Christmas ever. The Santa's wallet's a little light this year. So... Yeah, that doesn't matter. This is the best Christmas ever. What? Seriously. You guys are usually just way too busy to hang with us. You're always rack about what parties we have to go to and stuff. I mean, when was the last time you guys took time to sit down and sing with us by the fire? We've collectively chilled every day this week, and it's not even Christmas yet. <laughs> collectively chilled? Where do you come up with this stuff? <laughs> so being together is really that fly to you? Yeah. I mean, don't tell my friends or anything, but you guys are really kind of cool when you're not being kept and busy and mother's stress. 
Oh, hey, Dad. <laughs> Stick to the standards. Nobody says fly anymore, okay? My bad, dog. <laughs> if being together would really make the best Christmas ever, then maybe we still got a shot. Because unlike money, power, heat, time is one thing I currently have more than enough of. <laughs> Merry Christmas Eve, Mrs. Baker. Merry Christmas Eve, Mr. Baker. We are truly blessed. You know what? Yes, we are. I mean, I don't know. This, this whole experience, it just feels okay. It's like we're supposed to go through it, you know? Look, sparkle snow. Hey, sparkle snow. Ha, <laughs> oh, I forgot all about sparkle snow. I used to pretend that our whole backyard was filled with diamonds. I'd run out there with both arms wide open trying to scoop up as much as I could. <laughs> I thought I was so rich. Man, I haven't thought about sparkle snow since I was a kid. How did I ever overlook it? What a shame. Hey, let's walk to church tonight. What? Yeah, it's gonna be a beautiful evening. I mean, the town's all decorated. It's nice to drive through, but tonight, let's take our time. Let's really enjoy it. And hey, maybe we'll see more sparkle snow, huh? Yeah! <laughs> I love it. Me too. Okay, kids, where are we gonna eat our annual Baker Christmas Eve dinner tonight? Have we got the coin for that? <laughs> yeah, so we're down to our last 40 bucks. It won't be fancy, but hey, it's our Christmas Eve dinner. It's yeah. tradition, right? Hey, I have an idea. We could go to Penguin Point. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. So not funny. <laughs> I was thinking like Chinese buffet. Huh? Yeah! Yeah! We haven't eaten there in months. I know, so it's about time, right? We're going <laughs> Chinese! We're going Chinese! We're going Chinese! Kids. Come on back, okay? Stick together, all right? Anybody care if we gave the Baker Christmas Eve dinner to someone else tonight? How you doing? What do you want? May I wish you a Merry Christmas? Well, I guess if it'd make you feel any better. It would, actually. Merry Christmas. Well, Merry Christmas to you. What's this? My family and I would like to bless you with a hot meal tonight, so have a good Christmas. God bless you, brother. God bless you, lady. God bless you, kids. 
I hope you get good grades in school, and I hope you get a good job, and I hope you never get laid off. Thank you! Shall we go? I love you, Jack Baker. Are you in that, sir? <laughs> We're fine, thank you. How are you? Couldn't be better, not a bit. How's the job search coming? How did you know about that? Oh, I've been praying for you for a long time. I believe your lives are going to be different soon. Remember, God's opportunities sometimes come in disguise. So you've got to keep your eyes wide open or you might miss it. This season always brings challenges. But this year, we're in hard times, all of us. Most of us are struggling to maintain that lifestyle, that status that we've all grown accustomed to. But you know, it's not working anymore. We've not been placed on this earth to maintain status or to build up treasures for ourselves. Maybe it's time to quit striving for what we've had in the past and embrace what God would have us do during these tough times this day. Hey, hey, there's Gina. I'm gonna go see how she's doing, okay? Uh, get, I'll, I'll go with Mom. I'm coming too. As Jack left the Christmas service that night, he couldn't help but overhear the conversations of other churchgoers who were enjoying their own perfectly constructed holiday seasons. But as he looked into their eyes, he could see more. Could it be that other perfectly presented people were experiencing troubles of their own at Christmas time? At that moment, Jack questioned for the first time ever whether the glittery splendor of North American consumerism was really enough to fill a holiday with a genuine sense of joy. Well, hey, Shelby, how are you? Hey, are you ready for Christmas? Yeah, I'm going to my grandma's house tonight. I get to see my cousins. Sounds like fun. Hey, you and your family have a wonderful time, okay? Okay. Um, I made Christmas cards and sold them so that your family could have a good Christmas. That's very sweet. Thank you. What? Merry Christmas. Yeah. Yeah, I'm fine. Thanks. How are you? Are you fine, Jack? Are you really fine? You look a little down. How do you know my name? I know a lot about you, son. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Then you know my life's not so impressive right now, huh? And quite honestly, I don't really want to talk about it. And I don't think you do either. So why don't we go back inside and, and get warmed up? How do you know that I'm not interested in talking about it? How do you know I'm not just a kindly old man who cares? Don't stop fooling yourself. There's no such thing. I mean, we can all fake genuine compassion for about 30 seconds or so, but deep down inside, no one really cares about anyone else. I mean, why should they? We all have problems, right? What if someone really did care? What if that person was willing to help you get your life back together again, and even willing to make personal sacrifices to see it happen? 
people like that don't exist, okay? And even if they did, they'd pass me by if they were smart. I don't have a job. I don't have money. No heat in our home. I don't even have Christmas presents for my own kids at Christmas time. And now, and now I'm standing in a freezing cold parking lot, spilling my emotions to a complete stranger. And to top it all off, I just became keenly aware of how selfish I am. An eight-year-old girl gave me a bigger gift than I have ever given in my entire lifetime. Accumulated. I'm a failure. You are not a failure, Jack. Oh, really? Because we're going to lose our home in three days. My family, the ones that I'm supposed to love and provide for, are going to be homeless. Homeless! You show me a winner who left his family homeless at Christmas time. Just one. Please. He had reasons for doing what he did. I mean, he was sent to save the world. I'm just some guy. Trying to pay for a house I can't afford. Maybe there's more to your story than you think. Maybe a positive impact of your own is stirring around inside you. Tonight, in the alley, you taught your children how to give. That's a much bigger gift than any musical toy or doll. Someone like that does exist. You. People follow your lead, Jack. You're not here just to pay your mortgage and sell cleaning supplies. You're here to be that person who genuinely cares about others. That's who you are. It's time to stop wishing for it and start becoming it. How did you know about the alley? God's opportunity knocking on. <laughs> Jack, honey, are you ready? Yeah. I think I am. What's wrong, Adam? What? I was just thinking, would it hurt your feelings if I gave my presents away? To who? There was a kid named Nick I met at church last night. He doesn't have any parents. He lives with his grandma, and she doesn't have enough money for presents this year. Yeah, he can have mine too. You just met this kid last night for the first time, and you want to give him your Christmas presents? Why? so he can have a better Christmas. We've got this so backwards. Adults shouldn't be teaching children how to give. We should be learning from them. 
What will your Christmas gift be? Can we sing more Christmas carols around the fireplace? <laughs> Mom, can we hook it up? I'd love to. Who needs a flame? Warm fake logs do? <laughs> yeah! <laughs> A few days later, Jack and his family had to leave their beautiful home. It was a mixed bag of emotions for them. They were leaving so many wonderful memories behind, yet they still had each other. And they sensed an unexplainable feeling of optimism as, for the first time in their lives, they ventured out into an unknown and uncalculated future. They stayed in the church auditorium until spring, when they moved into a small tent village on the east side of town. It was a simpler life, and while they had very little to call their own, there remained a hopeful anticipation for what the next chapter in their story may bring. They also became vividly aware of the need for generosity. For who kept them fed and clothed during this time? You guessed it, the Feed the Needy Ministry. Then, one day, this chapter did something that every chapter and every book must eventually do. It came to an end. Excuse me, can you tell me where I might find Jack Baker? Hey, Jack! I got it! Hey, I'll be back, kids, okay? Jack Baker? Yeah? Rod Stevenson, Puries. Rod Stevenson, hi. What? Brings you out here. You do, actually. We know about what happened at Smith Anderson, and we know that it wasn't your fault. There aren't many people who would be willing to fall on their own sword to save their coworkers' jobs, <laughs> especially in this economy. Everybody's looking out for themselves. You're a rare find, Jack, and you're exactly the kind of person that Puris views as upper management material. We've always admired your work, and we want you to come on board as our director of marketing. We'll beat anything Smith Anderson was paying you, and we offer plenty of room for growth. How did you ever find us? We received a call from Carl Ferguson's former assistant, Miranda. She left the company when she found out what they had done to you. She works for us now, and she told us we could find you here. We want you on our team, Jack. What do you say? <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, do you offer relocation assistance? Because we may need, oh, 60 bucks for gas. I, I think we can manage that. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Jennifer. Hey, it was really good talking to you tonight. Thank you. It was good talking with you, too. Thank you. I'll be right back with your change. Oh, no need for change. Hey, you just tell those little girls of yours to have a very Merry Christmas, okay? Thank you. You folks drive safe. Holidays, sir. Just 30 in gas? Yes, please. Slow night tonight? Yeah. Most holidays are pretty slow. People usually do their traveling the day before or after. That makes sense. Sure glad you're open. <laughs> Everybody else is closed. We would have been freezing in our car in another five miles if it hadn't been for you, so we sure appreciate it. Yeah? It's a thankless job, I'm sure. But tonight, you're a lifesaver. Thank you. Oh, it's okay to say Merry Christmas. 
it is after all Christmas. Have a good one. Merry Christmas. <laughs>
<laughs> oh my. I just went blank. Why did I go blank? <laughs> Is it raining? No, I think a bird just pooped on your head. Oh, Are you serious? No. George, was that you? <laughs> I'm like, what was that big drop that you hit? Okay. Cut. <laughs> Did a bird poop on me? Oh! Did a bird poop on my head? You're joking. <laughs> Oh, yeah, this bird poop, it smells like salad dressing. <laughs> I want you to show me that you're at least a little worried. Not this is not some big joke to you. <laughs> actually, actually, I like what you're doing. Stop it, Matt. I'm not doing anything. I'm not doing anything. I'm not doing anything. Here we go. You want to know that I'm worried? Fine. I'm worried. You're the most believable <laughs> person. It's okay, David. I think this is what you need to enter. <laughs> Excuse oh, me, no, honey. excuse me. Hey, a woman as beautiful as you as you back. Michelle, stop it. Mommy's trying to read. Sign by the door says you buy gold tooth fillings. Do you, you take them here at the store? No, we don't. I noticed a lot of your things are made in China, and, and I've been there. <laughs> that doesn't qualify you to okay. work yes, here, though. I'm <laughs> <laughs> hey, Eddie. You're gonna have that guy ever come in and put it. Homeless for the holidays, scene 33, take 9J Mark. Action. Action. You're the most valuable man in the whole world to me. You're the most valuable person. <laughs> <laughs> Would that be oh! I can't believe this guy. <laughs> Which part? I heard a lot. High schoolers know how to use this thing. Now figure it out. Get back here. Can you figure it out? I'm sorry. I'm sick of your attitude. Go to your house. <laughs> Still rolling. Back up, Steven. From the top. From the top. Come on, Mike. That's a good shot, Excuse I think, me. personally. Can you tell me where these boys Come on, buddy. My lunch break is just about over. Let's go. I've been here 10 minutes. What are you doing back there? I'm working. Little help here, honey. I don't do cash registers, Wes. You know that. You see what I have to deal with here? I need to take this. Watch the window for me. This is so not cool. 